Oh, all right, lads, how's it going? Anything happen this week then? Oh, I see. Ah, um, nah, not, m not much then. <laughs> but it's time for the Game Week 33 preview. But first, the Game Week 32 review. With a Game Week average points sat in at around 48 points. And yeah, you better sit down, Mr. Average, because Bacon Boy and his team, the best ever team, the jaw spinning wacky boys team, scored. Oh, 85 points. Hey! And, and, and that was with both of my keepers not playing a single minute. 10 players played and still got 85 points. Yep, boy! <laughs> so my old dirty boy rank of 99k in the world has gone down or gone up. What way is it? Uh, the better one. <laughs> As I am now 71,000th in the world. Where hey! Absolute sexy stuff from the boysies. As we keep on grinding, we keep on climbing. We. But the games that my team finished like are this. Where I did in fact stick to the hit that I was hitting. Oh yeah, I had this much of a rank rise after a hit. Well, damn, son. <laughs> Where Son and Lingard came into my team for a Sterling and a Neto. And yeah, boy, oh, that definitely worked, didn't it? <laughs> With those two players getting a combined 19 points between them. And the other two players are not even playing. So yeah, a great success. <laughs> but then apart from that, and all of my other players scoring all the points, it was almost a wibbly wobbly one, right? Where both of my keepers were benched and didn't play after both of them have been playing all of the games recently. Like, what are the chances that they both don't play both in the same week? Unlucky, sorry, sorry. Unlucky! <laughs> and also, my Captain Kane went off injured in the first game of his double game week and didn't play the second game. Oh, unlucky. But nah, can he really complain with all the points he got? And all of the other points all of the geezers got as well. Because yeah, boy, look at all of the points. We got all of the points. Hey! Now, literally, we got all of the points this week. With my entire defense returning, with Sir Trent getting another haul even after conceding, with eight points just from an assist from the bonus point king himself. Now, I think he's got all the bonus points in all of his last four or five games. Madness. <laughs> that, that is absolutely crazy. Then Marcus Alonso who was actually kind of crap and uh, really regret getting him in now. But he did still manage to return points in that boring snooze fest game against the Brighton. And then Corner Cody is here as well after a nice clean sheet and a bonus point where I actually did the big brain energy move of playing him over Diaz. That's right, I was going to bench either Alonso or Cody. I decided to start both of them and bench Diaz, the, the most guaranteed out of them all. And guess what? All my other defenders returned and he was the only defender that conceded. Where hey. <laughs> and then almost every single other geezer in my team, the Lingard, the Sol the Inacho, the Vardy, all of them got on the goal assos where hey, and two weeks after the wild card, it is looking pretty good. You know, I feel like a lot of the players I got in were definitely the right choice. So yes, lad, get him in. So I would say it's a very nice high five as we scored the juicy and thick 85 points here, even without the keeper. Like that's absolute madness that is, isn't it? As we keep on climbing those ranks and we keep on pushing to eventually first in the world, right? Can this still happen? Can I get like a thousand more points in the last like seven game weeks? Yeah, sure, okay. <laughs> but guess what, lads? It's actually it's actually time, you know. What time is it? It's time to move on to the Game Week 33 preview. That's all. We're right here. It's not any Game Week, is it, lads? Is it? No, no, no. Because it's actually the absolute blanker of a Game Week with Spurs and Man City both not playing. As they will be facing each other in the Carabao Cup Final, where Josie Mourinho will versus... Wait, he's got sacked? When did that happen? Oh, okay then. <laughs> but with those teams playing in that instead of the Premier League, I do have a Kane, a Son, and a Diaz all just chillaxing on the bench, having a day off, switching the Xbox on instead, and just chilling. <laughs> but the rest of the team is actually good to go. I do be having one free transfer in my back pocket, but will I be using it? I'm not too sure. I, I don't know if I should use it. Where I do still have 11 starting players here, all with a fixture, right? But, 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 it's very likely that an Alonso, a Smithrow, maybe even a Mendy, maybe even some of the other guys might potentially miss out this week. So worst case scenario, even though I got 11 players all with fixtures, I could even end up with only six or seven players playing actually playing. And that would be terrible. So we don't want that. And you know, that would actually be the biggest of the unlucky's if it happened, wouldn't it? But I do still think I'm just going to leave it as it is for now, as there is a potential of double game weeks later on in the future. So I feel like banging a transfer in here could be a very wise move for the bacon boy right here, I reckon so. And you know, I do still have 11 players all with fixtures. So hopefully, hopefully, at least some of them can play. But as we just saw for this week, even with 10 players only playing, I still can get an 85 points for hate. 
And the three blank players, I think I still want to keep them because of their fixtures afterwards. And, you know, because a lot of people will be switching them out and maybe not getting them back in straight away. It gives a bit more of an upside and I want to keep them, right? So it does look like no transfer is happening, but terms and conditions definitely apply to that one. So now let's get into my preview predictions and finish it off with the captaincy thoughts for this week. Ah. But also, yeah, I didn't want to be an absolute cheeky scrub here and release a team selection video when we still got like four or five games left. That just doesn't make any sense, does it, lads? No, no, no. Surely no other FBL YouTuber will just release the video out just to get views, you know, and, and reduce the quality of the video just to get the video out, right? No, no, no. Definitely not. Oh, never mind. <laughs> See, big boy here, he's not a view whore, right? I will get out the best quality videos for you. No problem, lads. I will do it. <laughs> but the first game this week sees Arsenal play Everton. So the first game also sees big boy taking a nap and probably not watching the game. As the Super League team themselves, Arsenal, are trying to secure a top half table finish. <laughs> but with Europa League coming around the corner for them, I do feel like that's probably going to be their priority. They're not going to probably go out for it this game. So I do think it's going to be quite a close game. Maybe 2-1 to Everton. Wait, wait, no, no. I got Smith Road to play, I forgot. 7-0 Arsenal it is, okay. <laughs> Liverpool, Newcastle, where hopefully I will be having the triple up of a Trent, a Phillips and a Jota in there. But going no Salah in here, naked Salah for me, hopefully he will be a no and not a Mo Salah and get all the goals, isn't it? <laughs> but also Phillips has had a bit of an injury and also Jota wasn't pictured in training. Oh dear, please all on play. <laughs> but 2-0 to Liverpool is what I'm seeing in that game. West Ham, Chelsea. Chelsea, Chelsea, Chelsea. Where I could potentially potentially have a triple up of players up in this game, but also potentially none of them might not play. Oh dear. <laughs> With Mendy somehow being dropped for Kepa, like I understandable in the cup, but again in the league? Uh, oh dear, what, how has that happened? And then Alonso is just quite a risky boy right now. I feel like he's definitely second choice and I don't see him starting anytime soon right now anyway. And then a Jesse Lingardino, unfortunately, you know, he's the best player in the world. But he did limp off in the last game. To be fair, with all of that football skill he has, you know, it might weigh him down and injure him. But hopefully he'll be back and stronger and ready for this game. But I do think it'll be quite a tight one year. I'm going to go 1-0 to the Chelsea and hopefully my players will actually play. Sheffield United, Brighton. The game that screams clean sheet for the away team year. And a game that will cream points if you have any of their defenders in year. But I myself don't have any Brighton defenders. But, but, I also could if I wanted to. Should I do it? Nah, I don't know. Then again, Veltman, you know, best ever defender. He could get all of the points. 2-0 to Brighton is what I'm saying there. Wolves, Burnley. Burnley. It's Brexit, Burnley. <laughs> With the bargain Wolves, we're looking to make it back-to-back-to-back clean sheets here. Yeah? But what will the Shawnee Dice man say about that? Hi, guys. I'm Shawnee Dice here. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy Wood is going to give me wood. i wipe out all of your guys' clean sheets. Sorry about that. But, uh, we're the best team in the world. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No need of that, Shawnee Dice. Is there any need? Come on, lad. Behave. <laughs> but 1-0 to the Wolves is what I'm saying in that game. Leeds, Man United. Where will we see a bit of a reverse of what happened last time? Where United absolutely spanked the Leeds last time, didn't they? But you know what? I do actually think Leeds have probably learned from their lesson and decided, all right, no, we're not just completely all out attack all the time now. We'll actually have a bit of game management and, you know, switch it up depending on the opponent because maybe they don't fancy getting a new hole completely teared again. <laughs> so I do actually think it'll be quite a close game here. One all is what I'm saying. Ah, very surprising. I don't think Man United are going to get the win, yeah. Aston Villa, West Brom. Which the Lion Dean Smith man against the big boy, the big Sam man. Enter the Sam man. Whoa. <laughs> when maybe, just maybe, Grealish will play again. Is he injured? Has he disappeared from the Villa team forever? We never know. <laughs> like, has he actually just given up on Villa or is he actually injured? Please let us know. But West Brom do look like a team that aren't giving up. Uh, ignore the Leicester game. Before that, they look good, right? <laughs> and, you know, they still really need to push if they don't want to get relegated. So right here, I'm going to go for a one-all game here. But could be like 4-0 Villa. We'll see. <laughs> and to finish it off, we have the Foxes versus the Eagles. The Leicester versus the Crystal Palace. Where, as you see on the Vardy in the Acho, it could be a cry for them right there. With Vardy finally got himself within the goals and Ian Acho also got another goal but could have honestly scored like five goals against West Brom. Like he is insane right now. So I really do think this is probably one of the easiest games to predict this week. I am actually going to go for a 4-0 to the Leicester. Ooh. And that is how all the games are going to finish. Never ever fail before predictions on the games. But we do also still have the captaincy to select. Whoa. And what lad am I smacking this armband on? The C band. It doesn't mean uh, see you next Tuesday. It means captain who is going to get it. But I can confirm the boy that is getting the captain armband and going to get me double points this week is 
Ooh, Kalechi Iheanacho, hey! That's right, the Nigerian prince himself. He's just absolutely incredible. He's scoring all the goals. He's somehow getting so many chances, and it honestly looks like he could score a hat-trick in, like, every single game. But not just in terms of goals, just in terms of points and everything he's getting. He is probably one of the most informed players in the entire league right now. And he's also playing against a completely benched, terrible team in the Crystal Palace, who have actually been conceding the most big chances and the most goals out of anyone as of late. So he's got the form. He's got the fix. If you add that up, make a recipe, you put it in the oven for 30 minutes, you take it out, and guess what you get? You get all of the points where, hey. But that is it for the blank Gimme 33 preview. So to confirm, no transfer is going to be happening. Maybe. Bacon Boy might change his mind. Probably will. We'll see you on the deadline stream. And then Ian Acho is going to be the captain, ready to keep smashing it, and also keep smashing me up all of these ranks. And we're going to try and finish off the season very, very strong where, hey. So thanks for watching, everybody, and remember... <laughs> Don't be a cheeky scrub. Subscribe to Nathan Bacon right now. <laughs>